Hi, my name is Glenda Clemens and I love to crochet doilies. Uh, this particular doily is one of Emily Ferron's, or I'm sorry, Grace uh, Ferron's uh, doily patterns. And um, she's on the internet, she's on Facebook, and she's on Ravelry. I start putting my doilies onto, started putting my doilies onto a ring like this to hang in the window. Uh, because as the sun shines through the doily, it looks a little like stained glass. Uh, some people refer to these as mandalas, some refer to them as dream catchers. I refer to them as sun catchers because the light of the sun shining through the doily makes the unique appearance of these doilies. I have a fairly large uh, thread that I've got the fine, uh, uh, fairly large needle, I'm sorry, that I've got the fine thread on. This is crochet uh, thread size 10 bedspread uh, crochet. I like to use white because uh, I have a great big huge ball of it and I can take some off and make smaller balls and use it for this purpose. I go under the ring and through the pico and it doesn't matter where you start in this because it's a circle, everything kind of falls into place. And then I uh, go over that ring, the ring, and underneath it, and pick up the next pico. I go through the middle of the pico with my needle and thread. I don't tie this piece off. I'll show you why. And you notice I'm not doing a bunch of measuring. Um, I'm pretty much a fly by the seat of the pants sort of person. Uh, I count every stitch, but beyond that, I don't get too obsessive about this. Uh, I know that how things are going to work out um, in the end, I'll either like it or I don't like it. I like the effect of this, and it works really easily and really well. So I'm going over the hoop again, under and through a pico, and I'm going to continue that all the way around. It's a little bit fiddly, but not a big deal. And I unthreaded my needle, not a big deal. It's always easy to put the thread back through. Under the hoop, over first, take the thread over, then come under, pick up the next pico, go through the middle of the pico, pull that snug. Now I'm going to go over and under and pick up the next pico. Now at that point, I take the thread off the needle. I don't need the needle anymore. I pick up the starting thread. And now here's the point where I make adjustments. Uh, here you can get really fussy about this and you can get out a tape measure and you can measure how many inches or how many millimeters from the ring to the tip of the pico. It has been my finding that it really it works pretty well just to go ahead and snug it on up. Because we're working in a circle and everything is equidistant in the circle, I can pretty much tell by just looking. And here I've made a mistake. I haven't gone over with that one. That's not a problem. I'm going to pull the thread out of that first pico and put the thread back on my needle. I'm gonna go over the hoop and under the hoop and pick up this pico. The one thing I have learned is that if I don't do it exactly the same way for each pico, then it does wind up making uh, mistakes. I do wind up making mistakes and that does make a difference to the outcome of how close these are um, to each other. 
All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to snug up this other thread a bit. And if I just uh, sit here, and I'm going to show, put this right here. If I just sit here and kind of pull on both threads, you can see that it naturally aligns so that everything is equidistant. Um, I actually did one doily that was even smaller than this one. It wasn't one of Grace's beautiful doilies, but I did a doily like this. Um, and um, instead of uh, dry, uh, blocking it out on a board, I blocked it in the ring itself. That worked really well and it looked great when it was finished, but it was more fiddly even than this is. Now then at this point, when I think it's pretty much there, I do go ahead and get out and measure up and see approximately are all of my picos and um, now that one's not, uh, so I'm going to make, make that a little bit that way and let's go back and measure again. Uh, and I don't, again, get real fussy if it's a, a, a millimeter or so off, that's okay. If it's much more than a millimeter or so off, then I do give it a, a bit of a move. You see that one's too close, so we're going to do this. Once we adjust one pico, we have to adjust the moth. Uh, it adjusts the moth, so now we're going to go back and measure again. And this looks really pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, pretty good and pretty good. Yeah, that looks great. So now I'm going to take the two loose ends, give it one more snug up without moving things around too much, and just tie in a square knot right here. Again, pretty snug. And finish that square knot off. And that's how I get it on the hoop. You can see if I do this, it's pretty loose, but I'm gonna come along and make uh, adjustments on the uh, stitching that I do. And so that will help tighten it back up again. I think the issue here is that has gone under, uh, come back over again. So I'm gonna pull that back through there this way. Um, and I'll tie that down nice and firmly. Um, I'm going to pause the video while I get my thread together for doing what I do for the crocheting on um, making it look really, really pretty. Okay, so now I have my small ball of thread. I like to uh, do, make what I call a shell rope for the attachment. The reason I have the small ball of thread is it needs to be able to easily go through. Um, between the, the the picos and the hoop. So first I start off with just the usual slip knot. <clears throat> and then I chain four. Oh no, no, I'm sorry, I don't do that yet. First, I've got to get into one of the picots. So I uh, go, it doesn't matter which pico you start with, and ignore the basting thread you've used before, just leave it alone. So I do uh, a slip knot into, uh, a slip stitch into the pico. Okay, and then I do chain four. One, two, three, four, and double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. And this makes a nice little shell. And so we repeat that one, two, three, four. And double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. And 
and I keep doing this until I get a long enough chain that I can go over the hoop and under the hoop to this next pico. So I'll pause this for a few minutes while I make more of those chains. Okay, here we are now. I have crocheted this shell rope um, using the chain four double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. And you can see I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine shells. And so when I go over, take that rope over the uh, ring, I can see that it's going to be just about right hooking into this next pico. At this point, I take the ball of thread and set it outside the hoop. And I'll show you why in just a second here, a few seconds. Uh, go into that pico, pick up the last, uh, the loop <clears throat> from the rope that you're making and pull it through the pico. Now you see my threads over here. It needs to be where it is uh, going to work with uh, the, the um, chain. So I'm gonna pull that snug there and I make it a point to make these snugger rather than looser um, because um, the whole thing tends to want to be a little loose. Uh, I don't know why, I'm not a physicist, nor an engineer who tests tensile strength and stretch of different threads, but I do go ahead and make it pretty snug. And so here you see we've got one part of the rope done. Uh, I like the look of this. I like how it looks delicate and decorative at the same time. And you see my basting strings are still in place. I'm gonna leave those right where they are until I finish going all the way around. I'm gonna do a few more of these uh, while I, while the, I'm gonna pause the vid video and do a few more of these, and then I'll show you what it looks like as we come around to the end. Okay, here I am back again. Uh, I've completed all of the chaining around except for joining to the first pico. Uh, when I started out, I was using nine shells, and that just wasn't quite uh, loose enough. It was a little too tight, so I switched over to ten. The last one's a little tricky sometimes because everything does feel really snug until you're completely done. So I'm going to pull that last stitch through the pico. I'm going to bring the yarn back to the top side again. And then at this point, I'm going to do a slip stitch here and keep it nice and snug. And then I go ahead and do one more slip stitch, which isn't going to show up. And I'm going to cut the thread and pull that really nice and snug. Now that at this point I turn the work over and I take that beginning thread and the ending thread to the back side and tie the good old Boy Scout slip knot. Uh, I'm sorry, square knot, and in a few minutes after I'm through with the video, I'll go ahead and thread these onto needle and work them into the back of the um, doily. So there you have how I put that on there. Looks pretty awful, doesn't it? It's because this extra thread that we basted it on with is still there. So all I've got to do is I just go around and make a few cuts, being careful to cut only that loose thread and not something vital to the doily. And then I can just come along, whoops, that's tied around it. Then I can just come along and pull out that loose thread. And there you have it. That's how I attach doilies to a ring to make what I call a sun catcher. Thanks for watching.